inside big enterprises like Rackspace or Procter & Gamble or some of these big companies, you have thousands or millions of documents all over the place. And how do you uh, build systems that can get value out of those documents? Well, Pinger has a semantic search or indexing technology that lets you uh, get entity extraction, all sorts of fun stuff that you can uh, de developers can use. We're gonna learn more about it right now. Who are you? Uh, well, my name's uh, Peter Ren Hilton. Um, I'm Pingar's company uh, founder and uh, currently CEO. Um, I'm based in New Zealand, although I'm now uh, residing in Sunnyvale, Silicon Valley. Uh, we are looking at opening up our, our office here in uh, Silicon Valley, and uh, that's my role really for the next uh, few months. Very cool. And what, what is Pinger? Uh, Pinger's a company that's been in existence now for four years. Uh, people will probably not have heard of us. Uh, we only started commercializing our product in March of this year. Um, the first four years of our existence has all been around research. Uh, we worked very closely with a number of universities really to try and develop um, API components for content analysis, entity extraction, uh, to enable enterprises to get more value from their unstructured data. So four years of research, and so we're going through that interesting uh, change now of beginning to commercialize our products, so much more focus on business development, sales, and things that are really uh, quite new to us. Yep, and that's it's interesting that you're doing all this semantic research. I'm always interested in hearing new companies who have a an idea of what to do with enterprise data. Um, who are you aiming at? Is it the CTO or the CIO of a big company, or or is it only big companies? Right? Uh, the the focus is, is fair to say is probably on larger enterprises, enterprises that have literally millions of documents. Uh, although you'd be surprised at just how small a company can be to actually have a million documents plus. If, if you speak to firms of lawyers, um, attorneys as an example, uh, but then when you speak to governments, to uh, you know the ph pharmaceutical sector, the health sector, uh, they, they can have hundreds of millions of documents. And what we're trying to do is provide technologies that enable those enterprises to begin to uh, understand what content sits within their, within their data sets. Yeah. Um, so typically the entity extraction and content analysis components that we have developed really are designed to enable uh, enterprises to be able to identify relationships between documents, um, begin to, for instance, generate automatic metadata. Um, if redaction is a key point, then our entity extraction components allow companies to redact documents through algorithms rather than the, the black marker pen. So we've got a range of components that collectively enable enterprises to make more sense from the millions of documents that they have stored away. And how, how do we index uh, enterprise? Because a lot of times you don't even know where all the documents are. Right? I might be working in a small work group and I have no idea what the what the group in London is, where they put it on their servers and stuff like that. Well, that, that, that of course is one of the big challenges. So we, we have to work very closely with um, the, the, the IT departments to try and identify where documents sit. Um, very often uh, they'll sit within uh, document management systems such as SharePoint. So if you have, a, for instance, a SharePoint environment, that's really quite easy to categorize because we can identify document sets and we can point our algorithms at those document sets. But where you have uh, enterprises where documents are held in file share, it can take some time to actually identify where those are. But once we've found out where they are, uh, we're able to point our algorithms at those document sets, and then we're able to effectively process them using the components that we've got. Yeah, I, I have a feeling we just interviewed uh, DiffBot, which is a, a similar system, but all aimed at com commercial websites, public websites. What is it, and I understand what they do, what, what is it that you look at or your algorithms look at when you hit a Word doc or a PDF or something like that? What, 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 what are you looking for? Basically, it, it depends really on the application f around the component. Uh, I'll, I'll use a couple uh, by way of example. Metadata is a great example. Uh, most uh, search engines, enterprise search engines like Autonomy or Fast or Google Enterprise, need to use metadata to help them find and identify uh, the correct documents that a user might be looking for. The problem Give me is an example of some of this metadata. What, what would be typ typ typically when you uh, upload a, a document to a document management system, you need to add metadata fields. So it could be people's names, it could be locations, it could be company names, dates, 
um, addresses, uh, a whole range of entities. Uh, but most users, uh, and I probably fall in this category, are lazy. And if I find there's a shortcut to just click OK, then I'll type in one character and that's the metadata for that document stored. Um, what we're able to do is we're able to look at every single document, identify those entities, extract them, and then generate metadata from those extracted entities. So the need to actually humanly tag documents has been replaced by effectively by algorithms. So if, if for instance, if I start a Word doc by, uh, with the words by Robert Scoble, you, you probably can figure out that might have been metadata about who created that document, right? Uh, absolutely. And we're able to identify that Robert Scoble is a person and not, for instance, a town. And um, we've done that through basically using machine learning frameworks. Um, so when we look at text, we will notice that Robert Scoble is two words, both capitalized. We will also find another two words, New York. How do we know that Robert Scoble is a person and New York is a city? Well, we'll look at the context with where Robert Scoble sits within the sentence or a paragraph. We'll look at the context of where New York sits and the algorithm will determine through machine learning that New York is a place and Robert Scoble is a person. Very cool. Now, once you get all this metadata, what, how do you make it usable? Because you well, know, just a bunch of data in a, in a database is pretty unusable. Well, the, 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 once we've got the metadata stored in documents, it becomes much easier then for enterprises to find that data. Um, I mean, another great example of where this technology applies, um, we recently announced um, uh, a commercial arrangement with uh, Fuji Xerox, who are a scanning company. So when people now scan documents using Fuji Xerox systems, um, we're able to automatically apply metadata to those documents as they're being scanned. So once again, we've removed this whole need for humans to physically tag the documents. So they become easy to categorize, easy to find, easy to position into the correct directories within, for instance, uh, you know, a document management system. Um, the, the other thing I would say is that everything we do is uh, platform agnostic. So although I refer to SharePoint, our system would work with SAP, Oracle, any other uh, manage, uh, document management system. Yeah, and uh, do you build a system then that has APIs that developers can use, or uh, or tell me what what you do with the data, or is it just a, uh, associated with the documents themselves? We 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 were going to go to market at the end of last year, and we actually did a, a fairly significant pivot when we realised that. Uh, the amount of technology that we had would make it far better to release it as an API. And so in March this year, we released an API with 18 specific components that developers are able to access. So there's the, the standard sort of free developer sandbox account so they can start building um, applications. And our, our route to market really now is to work with major um, system integrators and developers. So we are now signing up um, a number of those who are using our components. Can you give me some of the key components? They, you said, said there's 18 components to this API? Yep, I, I'll, I'll give you several. Um, so if we're looking, at, say, at the area of um, rapid discovery, uh, which is all around semantic search, uh, we've got components that enable um, developers to set up refinement tools. So you can place a refinement tool within the search engine, which enables people to find information more quickly. Um, also within rapid discovery, we've got things like autocomplete. So as you begin to type uh, a word, uh, the drop down box appears. Um, so we have a number of those sort of off the shelf components. Um, in the area of entity extraction, uh, we're able to um, extract a number of entities. So um, for instance, uh, a lot of numeric entities, so credit card numbers, bank account numbers, dates from documents. Uh, we can also um, extract addresses, whatever a format an address might be. And it's not just the extraction, it's what you can then do with that extracted entity. So we then move from entity extraction to content analysis. And within content analysis, we've got redaction, sanitization, summarization. So we're able to take a 40 page PDF and create a six or seven paragraph uh, executive summary on the fly, simply through content analysis. Really? Really. That's pretty cool, and it, it's all algorithmic, so it happens really fast. And... It's, it, it happens in a, a, a split second, and what yeah. we've done uh, to make these components available is that when you go to our portal, you can actually access and import your own documents uh, on the public site, press one of the components and see exactly what the, the component does. So redaction, as I said, enables us to redact any document. Um, sanitization is very similar to redaction, but rather than just blacking out someone's name, we can replace 
someone's name with a random name. Sir Robert ah. Scoble would become whoever, John, John Smith. Smith. Uh, ab absolutely. Um, so, the, the, so the identity of the person or the address has changed, but the context of the document hasn't. Um, and that's so you can hand that database off to a research lab or something like that and know that your private customer data didn't go over there. A absolutely. So yeah. it, it's great, for instance, to, um, for instance, uh, law enforcement agencies that sometimes have to hand over documents to, for instance, defense attorneys. There's some information they do not want to have to reveal, so they have to redact that information. Um, it's really useful in a lot of agents, government agency areas where privacy is very important. So health records, you may want to hide patients' names. Well, in the past, that's been a, a physical exercise where someone's had to physically go through documents to redact. Um, our, our component does that effectively on the fly. Interesting. And why hasn't this been done yet? And or what's the competitive landscape for you? I guess? We, we, we do have competitors. I mean, entity extraction and content analysis is what I call an emerging area of technology. Um, Gartner recently uh, produced a, their latest sort of hype curve and big data was kind of on the, on the upward curve. Um, so there are a number of university departments who are currently researching this whole area of natural language processing, machine learning, artificial intelligence. They're all, all related. Um, but I can identify companies such as Extractive or Basis Technology who've got some fantastic technology in our type of space, but they tend to be focused on verticals, so maybe purely around defense and intelligence. Um, so they, they have that focus on uh, specific domains. We've taken a slightly more uh, horizontal view that um, metadata, for example, is a major problem affecting all enterprises uh, or the lack of it. So by producing components that enable people to generate metadata on the fly uh, adds real value to those enterprises. Yeah. I bet if I have millions of documents, the metadata actually becomes sizable. Where, where does this get stored and, and is it on my own servers inside a data center that I have to buy? Or uh, Tell me how I get, how, well tell me about Well, we, 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 we've got, we've got two, two, two solutions, one which is uh, probably very relevant um, as far as you're concerned. Um, we have a, a cloud solution and we have an enterprise solution. Um, we do use Rackspace Cloud uh, and so uh, people are able to use our API components send data up to Rackspace, we'll process the, um, those, that data using our um, online APIs and return the results to the user. Uh, there are, however, a number of um, enterprises where they will not allow data outside the firewall. So in that instance, we place the API on their internal servers and it's then up to their internal infrastructure to manage uh, where, where storage takes place. And what do they need to do the internal thing? Do they need, you know, like we offer OpenStack, right? Where you could load down OpenStack and now you have the, set, the same kinds of infrastructure that Rackspace Cloud has, but inside your firewall. What, what, we, what we tend to do is we tend to work with um, system integrators. So okay. what, Pinga don't, what we don't have are engineers on the ground doing the actual installation. Uh, we try and focus our uh, attention on the core components and the technology. Um, and because every enterprise has a completely different set of architecture, yeah. uh, we much prefer to work with system integrators who know that technology and let them do the integration. That makes sense. Anything else I need to know I, or what's cool about this technology? Well, I think probably one, pretty... of the, one, of, one of the areas, I think the, the technology itself is very cool and I think it's certainly uh, an emerging area of technology. Um, I think it's what we're probably doing now on the multilingual side because um, uh, too much uh, unstructured data is not a, just an English language problem. So we launched a Chinese language version of our API back in April. Uh, we will be releasing um, both uh, French, German, Spanish and Arabic versions of the API over the next six to nine months. Um, and we're moving into some other kind of other areas, interesting areas of research. So although we're commercializing the product, there's still a strong focus on research. And I think one of the areas that will create most excitement for those people interested in enterprise um, is the ability to start developing custom taxonomies. So a company will be able to build a custom taxonomy using some of our uh, technology. So rather than having to use a, a digital librarian to physically build a taxonomy, yeah. our entity extraction tools will identify the most commonly used terms and phrases and build a taxonomy on the fly. Wow, that's really cool. Well, that's really neat. Um, where do I learn more about it? Uh, well, if you go to our, our website, which is www.pingar.com, yeah. uh, you and can it's access... P-I-N-G-A-R. You're absolutely right. It's P-I-N-G-A-R.com. Um, developers can access the API key at no cost. 
Uh, we provide white papers. Uh, we provide lots of sample code. Uh, you can use Java, C+, um, and if you just want to access the public area of the site, then you can just copy and paste input documents into the relevant uh, component pages and check out the results. Very cool. Uh, are you on Twitter as well? We are on Twitter, yep. Our, our Twitter tag is um, PingarHQ, okay. and uh, we also have a group on LinkedIn, so anybody can go that. That's an open group, and we obviously release uh, information about new components uh, and more information you know, about the company as, uh, as we can release it. Very cool. Well, thanks so, so much for coming out. Thank you very much. Great to see you, Robert. Thank you.